So I reached out to Oakland University after last night's win against Kentucky, and they've moved on. They've got another game coming up, of course, this weekend, and uh, said, what the hell? See if Greg Campy's available. We've done that during the tournament over the years, and Greg Campy from Oakland University joins us on 365 Sports. Coach, I know you're awfully and incredibly busy. What have the last, let's say, 18 hours or so been for you, been like for you? Hell. <laughs> Absolutely hell. <laughs> All I do is talk, and I, I love talking, but I never thought I'd hate it. You know, I mean, it's been nonstop. The only the only time it was nonstop was from about 2 in the morning to 4 in the morning. But then I had to answer my text messages. I had 1,300 text messages, and you, you don't want to answer them during the day because if you do, then they'll text back, and then you, it's <laughs> 1,300, you have 2,600, right? So I, I, I got through to all but about 150, and just now before I got on, I looked at my phone, and I'm back up to 480. So tonight at 2 o'clock, I'll get up again and try and finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I, I knew going into the game after you know, reading about you guys and seeing what you that, that Jack Olkey was a three-point shooter, and that's what you talked about. But we just saw his shot chart, and I didn't realize that he is exclusively a three-point shooter. When he does take a shot close to the basket, do you worry that his depth perception might be off for a second? No, I make it go at a treadmill if he shoots two. I don't want him shooting any two. He's a three-point shooter. And then if he shoots a two, it means he's got to dribble it. So if he dribbles it, he'll probably turn it over. So I don't want that. Yeah, he does a, a, lot of, a lot of does those catch and shoots. He doesn't even take a step or two. He's just, boom, he's ready. All right. All right. Or a shot fake and you fly by and then he shoots it, you know. So I had a guy a couple of years ago. He actually, in Dallas now, he's with the Mavericks as their video coordinator, a guy named Max Hooper. And he went through the season with 245 shots, and they were all threes. He's the only guy in the history of college basketball to do that. So mm. it's not unusual here. We like that. Coach, uh, I really enjoyed your postgame interview last night, you and, and Jack Golke, and he had the great line to end it about, we're not a Cinderella. Uh, I just thought it was a great sign-off. You, you mentioned during that interview of you're going to enjoy it, but you guys, you have games to play. So how did you enjoy last night, and how quickly did you get back to work and, and focusing on the next one? Well, I, you know, we got through – watched a little bit, got back to the hotel and we had dinner and, and we had a riot at dinner because Gokey's turned into some, you know, social media sports hero or something. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, somebody tweeted out something like, uh, you know, this Oakland Jack Gokey just beat five pros at Kentucky and he'll probably be a insurance salesman next year. So our <laughs> players were like singing like a good neighbor, you know, Jack <laughs> Gokey was there. I mean, it was, we had a great time last night, and then we put him to bed, and we got to work, and we're just trying to worry about, you know, NC State right now. That's all we're trying to get done. Have you even thought about the value of what last – and I know you would like to have five more, but the value of that publicity means to the program and the university you love so much? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's – it's you know, I'm trying to keep the players away from that, but it's – I mean, they'll, they'll – they're – going down in history you know i mean they're, they'll be invited back every 10 years and they probably won't ever have to pay for a meal again in rochester i mean that, that that's unbelievable what it did but our our school website crashed last night there were so many hits on it and and then today this is a funny story man today uh our our school you know the online t-shirt sales we sold eight thousand dollars worth of t-shirts to louisville <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not to the school. I mean, just people in Louisville, Kentucky, using their credit card to buy Oakland T-shirts. It was like, I don't know if the, the word went out in Louisville, everybody buy an Oakland shirt for our game next year with Kentucky, or we're just going to drive around the state of Kentucky wearing Oakland shirts just to rub it into the blue blood heads or something. I don't know. $8,000 worth of, worth of uh, shirts from, from bought in Louisville is just insane. Coach, uh the, one of the best parts about March Madness is you get to find out about programs like yours, and this is not your first trip there, obviously the fourth time you've been there, but the more you learn about, uh, I mean, this is a, a small town school. I mean, the, you know, your dentist's son is on the team. His dad is taking pictures as a credentialed media member. That does not happen everywhere, and it's such a unique and cool story. What is, I mean, the vibe, does it, does it feel like you're, you're a small town? You've been there for 40 years. It's, it's just something so bucolic and, and different than we, we normally get. 
if you saw this as a Disney movie, you would say this ain't real. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy that, you know, the, his dad played for me and his dad was, I mean, he could get the jump ball for us. So he's six, nine, and <laughs> he could get me the jump ball, but he would go get me very many points. Uh, but I tell him you're the best recruit I ever had because I got your son because of you and he's player of the year in our league. So, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. And his mom's my dentist and kids sat on my lap when he was four years old, came to my camp. I mean, it's just <laughs> unbelievable story. And no, we're not that small. I mean, you know, we're a suburb of Detroit, which is, you know, one of the 10 largest media markets in the country. So it, it seems like it might be a small town though, but it's, it's a suburb, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there's a ton of people around. We have a great fan base. We've got 20,000 students at Oakland. So it's not some little school. So uh, you've said, try to keep the players, although let them enjoy this, but also let them understand that there's something else. How quickly have they responded to getting refocused for round two? Well, I said that before I got to the locker room, right? That was right after the game on the court. And when I got to the locker room, I didn't have to worry about it because, you know, usually they show the locker rooms and the coaches are doing all these fancy dance moves, which I can't do. So, I mean, if they played Barry Manlow music, maybe I could do something. But, uh, you know, I don't know what the, what the hell the coaches do. And the players are acting like they won the national championship, sp sp spraying water everywhere and things like that. I walk into my locker room. They're just sitting there. Um, you know, they're just sitting there, they're having a good time laughing and that, but there's no, you know, they got a higher cause. They, they, they know how important this game Saturday is. And while they're pretty full of themselves for winning that game, they surely didn't take it to a level that, that would get me to be concerned. And we had a great practice today. We're focused on what we're going to do. And I think we'll be ready to play tomorrow. How much of an advantage is it that you do have guys that are, juniors and seniors that have been with the program and bright lights, even though these lights are the brightest, don't bother them as much, or they've been through different things as opposed to a team. You know, you, you played Kentucky last night. Uh, a lot of guys are going to be NBA players, but this is also their first big time night that they've really had. Yeah. We've played an unbelievable non-league schedule though. Now mm -hmm. those games, you know, they're not on primetime TV. They're on the big 10 network or something like that. And, and while they mean a lot at that time, it doesn't have the pressure that that game had last night. But I think the pressure was more on Kentucky, especially when we showed them that we were going to play with them. You know, it wasn't going to be a 40-point blowout. And I think the pressure was more on them than it was us. But we, you know, we could have won at Ohio State. or No, we should have won at Ohio State. We could have won at Illinois, and we did win at Xavier. We lost at Michigan State. We lost at Dayton. So we played everybody. We knew that we can compete and we knew that we had a chance to win. I, we didn't care who we were playing. And so I think that played a big part in what you're saying. So coach, uh, Tom Izzo had some comments earlier in the week about the tournament. Uh, Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner was talking about uh, it t things are changing when it comes to the mid majors and uh, how much of that trickled. We had uh, John Gallagher coach at Manhattan. And of course he was at Hartford. We've had him on the last three or four years. They opened up, the year Baylor won the national title with Baylor, he's been a great guest for ours uh, of ours. How much of that those comments trickled into the mid-major programs, coaches, and fans? No, well, they're wrong. You know, they're absolutely wrong. You got the greatest sporting event in the world. Mm -hmm. If it's not the greatest, it's one of the top three. You got the World Cup, you got the Super Bowl, and you got this. And the opening weekend's the weekend that matters. I mean. There's a lot of people watching in the Sweet 16 and the Final Four, but those are the core basketball fans. You got everybody watching with a with a bracket in you know this first week. And if you if you change this, you, it, it's just stupidity in my and, and you can quote me on that, man. Oh, yeah. it's, it's stupidity. It is just utter stupidity. You got the best event in the world. Why would you change it over greed? You know. Uh, Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered, man. You don't, you don't, do not want to change this tournament, uh, Coach. Amen. It is perfect. It, you know, it is the, it's the five star steakhouse. Like you can't do any better. Like what are you, what are you trying to do? Like it's so wonderful. Yep, it really is. And but you know, people change the world, and it depends on who's in charge. And you get the wrong people in charge, and you do stupid things that that have to be corrected later. But I don't know if you can ever put the toothpaste back in something like this if you change it. So better be very, very careful before you change it.
Hey, Greg, I, I know you're busy. Uh, you, you have text messages probably coming in while you're on with us, and you have other uh, interviews to do. Uh, thanks to uh, Reedy for help setting this up, Michael for setting this up. It really is great to have you on the show. Wish you the best, and hopefully we're talking to you again maybe next week. Congratulations. Keep it going. What a story. And as Golke said, we're not Cinderella. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having us on. It was really, really nice of you. And if you want me back and we win, I'll come back. You got it. That's a great (laughs) – thank you, Greg Campy, the head coach at Oakland. Been there 40 years since the mid-'80s. And we could have gone on and on, but he has other interviews. 